All right, we're gonna do a quick video on what is grayscale and why would you care? So what we're gonna look for here is you know, what is grayscale? Over in our layers uh, setup, I'm gonna use Lightburn for this, but this does apply to your other software such as Laserbox or whatnot. Um, so here I have some image settings and right here, image mode. Uh, grayscale. And here you find the different algorithms that you can use to, to adapt your, your photos that you're bringing in, your raster images, PNGs, JPEGs, blah blah blah. Um, so these are all different ways that your photo can be manipulated uh, um, using one of these to try and convert it over. So down here at the bottom it'll show you what it's actually doing. Um, you know, in grayscale it is going to try and mimic the actual level of gray or sorry, level of black that's in your photo. Um, you know, Adkinson, Adkinson, what it does is, you know, basically it makes a series of dots, and the closer the dots are, uh, um, the, the darker things appear. Um, let's look at Stucky. Stucky does it the same thing, but a little differently. Um, Halftone, you got, you know, much larger dots. So you kind of get the idea, you know, of what exactly you know, it's going to do, um, or how it's going to make, make that uh, conversion over. So one of the big things with grayscale is you'll notice, you know, with this, what has it done? Um, you have white and you have black, um, and it's just how it's all combined. So the laser, whatever you set the power up here to, when the layer, laser kicks on, it makes a dot using all that power that big that's what it does um, you know same with all of the other ones that's what it's doing it kicks the laser on at full power um, to try and get that black and put the little dots there and fill more and more dots in at a time so grayscale is a little different grayscale is different because what it does is instead of hitting it with full power you can set the maximum and the minimum amount of power um, so the maximum it can ever do is in this setting is you know 60% power. The minimum it'll ever do is 12.5, and everything that lies between now gets you know uh, converted over based on that scale. So it's kind of like grading on a curve, um, as opposed to zero to 100. I'm now going to do 60 to 12. So how do you what, you, what is this really for? Um, what it is for is especially for photos um, that you're going to want to do um, is you get a much more lifelike looking photo. So how do you know what these numbers are? You know, well, where do you start? So normally, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put this up to uh, uh, full 100%. Um, normally what we can do is we'll pull in, or what I do, is I pull in a grayscale image. And I get my you know, use up some of my waste material here. So I'm going to kind and reduce reduce this guy down so I don't have to use up all of my material. Because what we want to do is we want to find the settings. They're going to give us something that looks as close to this as we possibly can on this material. And you know, if you've run something like a um, you know, speed power test already you can kind of guess where our settings should be um, you say okay well this is the darkest I want that to go and you can look and say okay at that speed um, I want the the lightest uh, is about right here that's where I want my tones to be um, that's one way to start or you can do just kind of bulldoze it through just like what we're going to do right now so right now it's at 112.5 I use 12.5 because pretty much anything under that, um, the laser doesn't really do anything, particularly on wood. Um, on rare occasion, there are some materials I'll see that we'll pick it up on. Um, black paint on rare occasion will get it uh, at 10%, but generally speaking, it doesn't really do anything. So I've set it up to you know, 100 and 12.5, and put our little guy here. So let's tell our laser to go ahead and start and we'll watch it do its thing just gonna should be fairly quick uh, because it's not a very large line and what we're gonna do 
is we're going to compare what it actually did with our image. Um, and then we can start adjusting. And generally, if you're getting too much black, you know, we want to bring the, the upper end uh, down a bit. If we're getting too much white, we want to bring the lower end down so we can get something in between. I see he's going to town in there. So we're going to kind of pause this while he finishes up. Just about done. I think I'll make this easier on everybody and pause the video while it's running out to not taking quite so long. Alright, it's all done. So let's go ahead and update our overlay. And now let's look and see how close we got. Well, it's not bad, um, but notice our. We're starting to get some pretty dark look down here already. Really, we shouldn't get be getting something that dark until down this side. So yeah, this is pretty much uniformly dark. There's not a whole lot of variation. Then we start to get a little variation here. So what we're going to do is, like I mentioned, we'll go ahead and we'll reduce our top end. Um, we can do this you know, systematically, drop it by 10% you know, each time. Um, or you can try and do it out by halves. Um, I tend to go by halves um, because you can get to your result a whole lot more quickly that way. So we'll do it go 50%. Let's move our art right here. And we'll tell it to start. Alright, so it's off and I'll catch you back when it's just about done. All right, so we've finished up doing this business. Let's update our overlay, and then we'll go and we'll take a look and see how we did. All right, so we're getting a little better. We're starting to get you know some color here, right where you know we're starting to get it, but it's all uniform color. Um, we're not getting a whole ton of gradient in there, so I think we need to turn it down you know, just a bit more. So again, using the my rule of halves. Let's see what happens if I drop this down by half again. 25. Alright, and we'll tell it to go. Alright, all finished up. Let's update our overlay. And bring it down. Oh, alright, well. We got some result, but clearly way too light. We, we, we're not getting our dark on this end. Um, though we do have a, a lot more gradient that's kind of stretching down yeah, all the way in. So we probably lightened up too much. So flip back. Let's bring it back. Do, 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 what do you say? Um, 35. All right, let's go ahead and we'll give that a try. And we'll see how our, our, our next one looks. Okay, so tune up the last couple of lines there, and there it finishes. Update our overlay, bring it down. Okay, yeah, we're getting here. Look at that. Where our color here is starting to really get to this end. Um, it is a lot lighter than what we were up here, though. So, what if we? Try and move our zero point down a little bit, just to see what happens. A lot of this, as I've said before, is you know, just kind of messing around and finding out what happens. So what if we did drop this to 10? Um, 10, which I know isn't really going to mark on anything usually, but we'll see what happens. Because since it's going through and checking and recalculating all of the values, perhaps you know, changing our, our zero point will have an impact. Let's find out. Alright, it finished up. Look at our overlay and see what our results were. Okay. So, our, our stuff sits about right there. Let's kind of get these guys lined up. 
So you got a little bit more. It's a little bit darker, a little bit on this end. You start getting you know, more gray. Our gray still starts there. So I think, yeah, our, our going that way didn't really work out. But just to see what, what happens, let's go and check our cut again. Let's bring our end up to the 50 level. Remember, our 50 is right here. Uh, let's see if we can get that dark uh, on this end, but light on this end. Let's go ahead and kick that job off. All right, finish that round. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this is our 50 with 12. And this is our 50 with 10. So what do we really see? We see that we had a much longer line with the 12 you know, before it got all the way through. You know, the, this guy's actually shifted side of us a little bit more. So looking at it, you know, what did we did we gain anything really? Um, not particularly. Though it looks like we might have gotten a little bit more darkness on this end um, as things went on. Now, we can always try and see what happens. Let's go back over here to our cut. Let's say, just make it a, a really obvious, we'll set it to zero. That should give us a, a, a big, big difference. So it is unfortunately, you can't see these as well in my, my camera as you can in person. Um, but what I can tell you is the top one there, the, the end of it is it, really deeply dark. Um, and compared to you know the next one, it is a little bit lighter uh, in, in color, not quite as dark. Um, but the, the, they start looking good right in this level right here. Um, you start getting a little bit better. This one's better yet. Um, but we want to try this one to see what happens. Let's tell the laser go ahead and get its work going. Alright, it finished up that run. Let's update. Let's see what we got. Okay, so it definitely moved our white quite a bit up. So one of the things I wanted to see if I could do to show you kind of the, the, the different looks is I put another camera inside. Um, so that we can get a good idea of what this looks like in, in, in person. Remember I told you this is all dark uh, and this one's a little bit lighter and so on and so forth. Yep. At this point you know, we can keep playing with it and you know, feel free to experiment uh, and see where things go. Um, we got a nice dark solution here. And this looks, you know, pretty okay. Um, at least according to, you know, where we want to be. Um, we can probably give it a little, you know, give it another go. Uh, move it down to, say, you know, a 5%. You can see it lightening up here. Or I can pick this one up here. Because um, it does have a, a pretty decent gradient. Um, so, I suppose at this point, I think that's what we'll do, is we'll grab one of these and show the difference between different gray scales. So if you've been around, you've probably seen this picture a few times before. It's an easy to use grayscale for me. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set him here. We'll keep that one. We're gonna duplicate our image and put him on a different line or a different layer. All right, so 3000 millimeters per minute and we said 50 at the top I think that one's the best let's see that was 100 that one is 50 this one was 25 that one was 35 and then yeah okay so let's see what happens if we do say around uh, 30 with our 12.5 like we did before grayscale same okay 
All right, so yeah, I installed a little camera in there. You see, you guys can see what's going on. I got to move him out of the way. Um, otherwise, the it's going to get rammed. All right, so we're going to give those a shot, and we're going to see if how those different settings for the grayscale um, have changed what our photos look like. I don't want you. Go away. All right, cool. So, actually, we line these guys up a little bit better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Now they're nice, and we'll tell them to go. All right, so I'll see you back in a little bit. All right, so it all finished up. So, just a quick one. If you look at here, we can see we have a lot of detail. Uh, and a lot of different grays going on in this photo, which is why grayscale is really good for photographs. Um, and because I'm printing it small, that makes a whole lot of difference. But you know what ended up being our end result? Let's take a look. All right, so when we were heavy-handed in that one, um, we definitely lost a lot of the detail. It's all kind of blacked out. The face is washed out uh, um, a lot. We do get a little bit of the shadow here under the chin. Um, you know, our block, you know, here where the shirt comes down. If you notice, let's grab it. Let's bring it in a bit. You know, right here is black on that upper f photo. Yeah, we, we lost all of that. Whereas here, where we had the lighter settings, uh, and we did a little bit better on our grayscale, um, you know, we, we're, we're really seeing a bunch of the detail in the hair. Um, sorry, my camera's a little fuzzy, so I'm not getting a great image. But you can still see we have light uh, shadowing here. The shirt looks normal. You can see the gradients starting to go through it versus you know the solid line that they have going that's going on right there. Um, and this is what I mean by more lifelike photos. Um, you, know, you can really dial this in to get you know, something that's really awesome. And this is how you do it. Um, you, you start playing around with the gradients, you know, moving your upper and your lowers down. Um, like I said, you can run a, a speed power test and see you know, what speed, where it was your, your dark that you want you know, without necessarily digging in. Um, where is your, your light point? And that'll start giving you, you know, something to start changing, you know, here in uh, your cut settings to see what happens. Um, and you can just you know, keep trying. Say, okay, this looks good. That's not so good. I want to see what happens if I do this. I want to see what happens if I do that. And then once you're happy, you just go ahead and you know, give it a shot. You can do it, you know, small size, big size, you know, whichever uh, um, happens to float your goat. And there you go. All right, friends, so that's my quick video on Grayscale and what it is. Hope you learned something, and happy exploring. Take it easy.